Hi, my name is Abdali, Ali and in this video we will be looking into testing the BLE app UART example located in the NRA5 SDK. So in order to do that we need to have a development kit. So either you need to have the NRA52 development kit or the NRA52840 development kit. Actually uh, any NRA52 based development kit. For my uh, for for me I'll be testing on the NRA52840 development kit. So if you have the NFH developer case, you can also use it. It's the same. You you have you have the same the 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 same steps to follow. Okay. So uh, for development kit, next you need to have the NRF command line tools installed in your own PC. So you just head over to this page here and install the latest version for your operating system. So you just select the oper your operating system here and. Uh, Click this link here to download the NRF command line tools. The next is the NRF 5 SDK. Uh, for this example, I'll be using the version 16.0.0 of the NRF 5 SDK. So you need to download that. Okay, the next tool that we need to have is the Sager Embedded Studio. As we'll be using the Sager toolchain, so you need to, have to download the, the Sager Embedded Studio. So you, need to, you can do that in this page here. As you can see here, it is available for many operating systems. You just uh, hit this download button here for your operating system. Okay, the next tool that you need to have is the Arduino IDE. We'll be using this uh, IDE here uh, for uh, for sending the, the 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 characters to the uh, to the NRF to the NRF five to the NRF52 development kit. You can use uh, you know you can use other uh, terminal emulators like the TerraTerm or anything like that. But for me, I'll be using the, the Arduino IDE. It is simple to use. It, it has the, this serial emulator and it is easy to use. Okay, the next thing that you need to have is the NRF Connect for mobile. This is the application that will be answering on the phone. And this is what we'll be using to test the, the UART on the belly. Okay, so there are also other applications that you can use like the, the, the light blue application or the BLE scanner. But I prefer using this one. It is pretty easy to use. And it is, uh, you know, an application with the Nordic uh, semiconductor. Okay, so uh, I think we're good now. Here, in the NRF5 SDK, so where, where you did, uh, I extract the NRF5 SDK version 16 uh, files. So for me here, I have extracted that in the NRF5 SDK. So here, in this uh, folder here, locate the examples folder. Then, uh, Billy peripheral then locate the project the Billy app you want press this one and here you have a bunch of uh, folders here is the PCA folder and his the, the he, here the X folder this contains the X files for the the pre-compiled X files for uh, the mini uh, developer kits that this project support and here you have the PC and numbers uh, folder this this is where the the project files are or, or for each development kit that this project support. So here we have PCA 140, uh, the, the other emulated version, and we have the PCA 156 and the other emulated version, and we have the PCA 10 100. If you don't know which uh, PCA number to choose, this is, the, this, this is related to the SOC that you will be using, or uh, eventually the, the development kit. If you don't know which uh, PCA number, just hit NF52 is in Google. And if you PC and number, and here you have this link here, just open it. I have it open it here, and here we have it. So for the NRF5840 development kit, it's PC and base PCA156, and the, the main uh, chip, and this is the chip that is uh, on the NRF52 in the development kit, it is the NRF52840. And we have also here the dongle, we have the NRF5832 development kit, the NRF52 development kit, it's PC and base PCA140. And for the E, uh, like here, as you can see here, this is the E, this is the emulated version. This is for the other SOC that this developer kit supports. Because you know, a developer kit does not support just the, the, the SOC that it has on board, but it, it also supports other SOCs. For here, the, this is the folder for the other SOC that the NRA52 developer kit support. Okay, same here for the NRA51 NRA developer kit, and it will also the dongle. For me, I have the NRA58 for developer kit, so I'll open the, the PCA100. Uh, 56 folder here and here we have the the soft devices supported for the difference between these two software devices 
as you can see here here we have the s uh, 1 13 and we had the s 1 40 this is what the this uh, uh, pcn 156 or eventually the in a 40 soc support so we have these two and here this is the difference between the two these two and here you have the the soc that they support and here i have the my soc this is the n5840 also here the difference between these two is like you have here the long range in in the s140 s140 and you don't have it in, in the s130 and uh, you know you have many other uh, functionalities here okay so for this example i'll be using the s140 Next, you need to choose the uh, the toll chain. I will be using the secret toll chain. So open this folder here. This is SOS. It is the SES, and it is the secret embedded studio operation for this. Okay, and here you open this file. This one. This is the AM project. Let's open it, and it launch in the embedded uh, in the secret embedded studio ID. So here you have the main.c file, and this is where the application file. Cool, so just a, a small here. So we have this device name. This is the device name that we have in the in the app. We will be looking for our developer kit. So we have the Nordic UART. Cool, so uh, we have the I have my developer kit. This connect my developer kit to the PC. And here I have it. So just uh, open it here. And here I have my developer kit. See? Okay, so next, what we're gonna do is just uh, head over to uh, target, connect glink. Good. Now next, you need to uh, erase all. So you, you erase all. The, so so we can erase all the you know the previous uh, project that is uh, flashed to the the previous the previous application that is installed on, on my developer kit. Next, after that is done successfully next you're gonna need to hit build here and build the money and hit build and run and it is building and running the application i will be running in the application in a second as you can see here the in the the, the board does not uh, you know blink the led that uh, you know that shows the advertising does not yet blink so once the application running you'll have an led that blinks this is for the advertising for showing the advertising and here we have some functions here we have the services in it same for many uh, billy uh, bill related, related applications means that the applications use billy and you can see here this is the, uh, the the function that is responsible for blinking that led see here when we have the billy advertising event fast uh, we have the bsp indication set bsp indicate advertising and this function is what is responsible for blinking the LED one on the development kit. Cool, so we have the application running on our development kit. Next, we need to head over to our phone here. And here I launched the NRF Connect application. And there you have it. Also, you need to make sure that Bluetooth is uh, on here. You'll have an error here if you don't have it. Okay, so here the application is scanning. As can you see, stop scanning. It is scanning, and it found uh, the our board, and here it is. So we just make connect, and here we are, we are connected to the board. And you can see here the LED is turned solid. Next, we have the services here: generic access, generic attribute, and we have our service here. This is the Nordic UART service, and here is here it is the UID. See, this is not a uh, a SIG uh, adopted. Uh, service so it has a 128 bit UID and here we have the two characteristics we have the RX, char RX characteristic this is where you can write as you can see the properties write we have the uh, write property and the write without response the, the difference between this write without response uh, with no response at the, the write this is the write with response is that this write with no response is fast it can uh, you know perform fast than the, the write but here you don't have a response so we don't know if the if the device gets your message your your message or not okay and here we have the text characteristic this is where you get what the, the developer kit sends through this uh, through this uh, characteristic or this service okay so uh, to get what the development kit sends we need to enable notifications on this characteristic here as you have as you can see here it has a notification characteristic 
you just press this button here and you have see here you can see the disc in the descriptors you have the this value notifications enabled cool now we need to head over to the arduino id cool so in the arduino id here you just uh, you need to head over to tools then in the port here the port you need to select the port for the, for your development case okay so to uh, to check your uh, the port the com port for your developer kit you then you just uh, open the device manager and head over to ports and the com and the lpt here and as you can see here i have glink cdc uart port on com 19. cool so I just close that and here in the tools you just you don't need to you know worry about all this you just head over to tool to port and select com 19. cool after that just open this serial monitor here and here i have it open here one and i have this one here cool. next next in here uh, check this auto scroll here don't check this one and here you need to check this new line this here adds a new line which is just a uh, backslash and n to the message that you send here to the characters that you support here so uh, it, the new line is necessary because you know if you here in this application if you head over to line uh should have the line which is control g you just put uh five to one here and as you can see here this is the uart event handler function here function for handling app uart events this uh, in the details this function will receive a single character from the app uart module and append it to the to a string the string will be sent over billy when the last see when the last character received was a new line see or if the string has re reached the maximum data length so uh, when this uh, when this uh, function will send the, the data to the to the to build to the billiard service is when you have a a new line uh, after the uh, you after the data or if the that data, data reaches the maximum length the maximum length here as you can see here is uh, uh, the maximum length here we have the buffer see the buffer which is 256 we have a, a bigger buffer there so just you make sure to you know to add a, a new line here so you can you know each message you said you just hit print you just hit send and it'll send it cool so make sure you have a new line here and also make sure here for the for the board right make it uh here 115 200. this is set with a function here as you can uh, let me move to it so see here uh, this is here we have the 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 initial function for the uart we have the eric spin it is here on the i think six and this one is this one is eight this one is six and this one is eight see this is the sixth pin and the eighth pin those if you just leave them like that are attached to the to the to the, to, to the debugger chip on the development game that's why we get that throughout the 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 usb the the com port so if you change those you need to make sure that you add a you know a usb to uart on those pins see so, you now okay anyway th th those pins are attached to the to the to the debugger on the chip and the debugger is uh, connected to the uh, through the usb to the pc that's why we are connecting through it so what 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 happens here is that the the, the arduino will send this IGE here will send this uh, uh, will send these characters here through the USB to the debugger chip on the board, and the debugger chip will forward them to these pins here. And these pins are actually connected to the SOC, and there where where the SOC gets these uh, data. Cool. So let's test that. Okay. So we have. Uh, so we have the, the Arduino IDE serial emulator here and we have our app uh, the NRF uh, connect mobile app here and it is connected to the, to the development kit we have it here and we have the notifications enabled on the TX characteristic and here let me send uh, a character here let me just press hello world and let's send it 
and here you have it see the value of the tx characteristic is turned to hello world let's add another one just here and there you have it another character here just send and there you have it again and it is working now to do the rx characteristic where we'll be writing so we just press this one to write new value here and let me just add some random characters here and press send and there you have it here it is in the arduino emulator uh, UART simulator so here add an again just press and send and there you have it again let's uh, just tr try with this one at the end now yeah so everything is uh, turned to a string so you don't have a new line just this one cool and i think that's it so you have it that's you have it I think the next uh, the next project that uh, the uh, the next project that we work working on is uh, building a, an application using the Ionic framework for you know so you can easily you know write uh, uh, these things here. So for example, if you want to send a message to your, to your developer kit through the this uh, UART service, you just enter in a, you just uh, put that in a you know a text field and you just press enter and it send it. Also, if you want to send a message from the developer kit to the to the to the phone to your phone, you just uh, hit that over you just, you just send that over a you know a, a like a thermal emulator here. We just wrote the board you know with a function or something. And you know with with something like like you, when you send sensors data or something like that, so you can just send it and it'll appear in your application. So that's a project that I'll be working on soon. Okay, so I think that's it for the for this video. Hope you learn something from it, and uh, thanks for watching.